What is going on, YouTube fam? Welcome back to the salty, salty air on another high adventure video. I welcome you officially for the first time to the new vessel of the channel. This is a 20 foot G3 boat center console, as you can see. I am so pumped for this. This is four feet longer than the old SS High Adventure and a foot and a half wider. So as you can see from here, check it out. Look at all the space we have. I have installed the Minn Kota Tarova saltwater trolling motor with this little guy right here, which gives us uh, a few extra features, which I'll probably get into later. But if you follow me on my Instagram, you know that this moment has been coming for quite some time. I have spent the last few weeks getting trolling motors installed. Uh, I've got brand new uh, batteries, all kinds of lithium batteries, upgraded the lithium battery settings for more boat tent camping. Yes, that is not going away. If you thought the boat tent camping was going away because we're getting a new boat, you were sadly mistaken. This is the reason I bought this boat because it should work out mwah, beautifully for boat tent camping. But that's not today. Today, as you can see, we've loaded up the crab pots. I've got, like I said, five with me. We also have brand new shrimping poles that we're gonna be going out and doing. But I think first things first, we're gonna drop some pots in the water, let those soak. And then we are currently right at low tide, in fact, Looks like the tide is just starting to come back in now, which is perfect for the shrimping. Let's drop some pots and then let's get shrimp in. There you go. Chicken for the crab pots, specifically chicken legs. They seem to always work the best. Got our first location. Here we go. There you go. There's number one. Ugh. There it is. Pot number two. Right at the mouth of this creek. Hey. Oh. Hold up. Wait a minute. That's a little shallow. There we go. I like setting my pots at low tide because then you know, like I drop them right now, I know that they're not gonna be out of the water. So one of the advantages of setting at low tide. Ah! Sweet. It's two of five. Three, all full of chicken and ready for some crab. Plenty of line. We're done. All right, pots are set. We'll probably come back and check them when we're done shrimping. Uh, they'll be down for probably three, four hours. That's probably how, about how long we're gonna be gone. So that's definitely plenty of time for some crabs to make their way in. So, but next it is time to do some shrimping. I am so excited. I have been waiting for this really since shrimping season ended last year and uh, it's been getting some nice cool nights so hopefully the shrimp will be up shallow. Let's go find out. Alright 2.7. Let's go ahead and cut it off right here. Raise that motor up in the back. Let's anchor up right here. I have with me, some of you may have noticed, some new shrimping poles. I didn't make any homemade ones this year. A local guy actually makes these. These are 14 footers, so plenty long. Let's see how deep we are here. Ooh, that feels like a good bottom. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set a few test poles. One right there. And then we're gonna go down about 10 yards, set another, maybe right here. There we go. Another one right there. there. Perfect. All right, let's get some bait ready here. Need a little water in this. Maybe not that much, but maybe that much. All right, have our bait binder, which gets more and more expensive every year. Notice that. But isn't everything? What a mad world we live in. I need to start making this stuff myself. Pour a bunch of it right in here. Right into our bucket. There we go. I'm gonna actually put gloves on for this because there are actually bits of bone in this bait binder from the fish they grind up. And uh, it, yeah, I've had them poke up into my skin and almost like a, almost like a sticker or a splinter. It kinda hurts. One day I'm gonna have my kids doing this for me. <laughs> That's why I have them, right? 
How's that looking? How's that feel? Look good, feel good? I mean, it looks pretty good to me. Yeah, looks good. Set him right there, make another one. All right, we got a couple per pole. We're gonna toss them right down here. There we go, there we go. Ooh, it's starting, ladies and gentlemen. It's starting. A couple for you. And a couple for you. All right, we'll sit tight. Actually, you know, we might make a few random casts with the cast net next. You're supposed to let this bait sit for about 15, 20 minutes before you start throwing. Gives the shrimp time to find it and get around if they're in the area. So we might just sit out here and make a couple random, random throws here. Oh, hey, hey. Oh, we got a few shrimp. Check this out. Random throw. That's a good sign. Good sign. Now take a look at this. Here we go. Get some first shrimp of the season. Look at the size of that guy right there. Look at that. Oh man. Random cast. That's a good sign, guys. It's a real good sign. Isn't it? Some nice ones. Oh, hey, one over here. There you go. Four. Just a random throw out on this flat. All right, look at this. I brought with me this year this basket so we could just empty our cast net right to the basket. Water will filter out, shrimp will stay in, and it's a beautiful purple. I mean, I don't know, that's all they had. But we're actually just gonna set that right down there. Let's throw another cast here. I've got a good feeling though that that bait, man, oh, that bait's gonna be bringing them in. All right, been about 15 minutes. We're gonna see if anything's at these poles here. Let's get it. Here we go. Moment of truth here. First pole. Oh, beautiful throw. Beautiful throw. But I'm kind of hoping to see, like, when, oh yeah, oh dudes. Oh my goodness. Oh, I was gonna say, I'm hoping to see shrimp, like, around the poles. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> how about that for a first throw, y'all? Check this out. Look at all the shrimp up in the head of that net right there. Yeah, I think they're here. I think that's a good, good, safe bet to assume. All right, check this. Oh my lord of mercy! Shoo! Good grief! Oh my gosh! You know what? We're gonna drop them right down in here. <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys in just a second what we got. Look at this! Check that out! Okay, look at that. We just, in one throw, put about probably 40, maybe 50 shrimp. Oh, we got some out here too. So what I'm gonna do is like some of these guys like right here, like look at the size comparison, right? Like I wanna eat that guy right there. This guy though, he's gonna go in there because what he'll become is bait. When this water gets too cold here pretty soon, another nice one, and uh, these shrimp go out deep and I can't catch shrimp anymore, well, we gonna have us some frozen bagged shrimp. So I'm not paying for shrimp because I always feel stupid come like end of November, first part of December, like paying for mullet, paying for shrimp. It's like, like three weeks ago, I was just catching the devil out of it. And now here I am, you know, paying like six bucks a bag. Now, we ain't doing that. We're gonna get our own bait this year. I learned last year, but let's go try this other pole here next. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is where we're gonna set up. We'll get the rest of these poles out, but let's do another throw. Let's throw on the first pole we actually set out here. See if anybody's on that. See if we can get a bucket full here. Oh, see, see all the shrimp? See them all scattering? Yeah, buddy. That's what you want to see. That is what you want to see. And then you're pulling up bags of shrimp. Not quite as many on that throw, but still probably like three dozen shrimp. All right. I think we have established that we've got shrimp in the area. Let's go ahead. Oh my gosh. Oh, I forgot how much fun this is. Let's get the other poles out. We got seven poles to go. Let's get it spread out. Let's call these shrimp in. It's go time. It's go time.
Oh my gosh, look at that throw, y'all. Look at that deck. We got a puffer fish. I think that's a first for me. A puffy. You get on out of here, buddy. All right. Whew. I think we're going to call it a day or a morning with that right there. But check out a couple things I caught here. Look at this. I need some help identifying a species. Here, let me pour them out into the net. I got a couple cool things. Wait for this. I think I do anyway. Oh, well, first, look, huh? we have a little cuttlefish. And these things bite, I know, firsthand. Huh. Oh, there he goes. Down to the depths, I think. Maybe? Well, if he doesn't go down, he's gonna be fish food. But look at this. Is this what I think it is? Isn't this one of those like mantis shrimp? Somebody tell me. A little nervous grabbing him. And that looks like a mantis shrimp. It looks like a praying mantis. The ones I've always seen though are like super colorful. They're like really orangish and stuff. Oh, his little, his little foot stuck. I don't know. It's super cool looking though. I mean, isn't that a pretty looking shrimp? Way cool. We'll let him go. I just thought that was pretty cool. Got him in the... No, he'll be fine. Well, maybe. We got him in the uh, in the cast net with the rest of these shrimp. Didn't get any other ones like him. Just the one. But man, we have us a basket full. Wow, y'all. That is pretty incredible. And it's barely lunchtime. Like, it's just noon o'clock now. And we already have a basket full of shrimp. Look at that. Good grief. Holy cow. I've got some work to do. Let's let's throw, throw a few more times and I think we'd call it a day on the shrimp. That is, I mean, that's pretty epic. That's pretty epic. Wow. I've got the patience of a six-year-old. I decided we're gonna go ahead and check the pots. It's been about four hours, so you know, that's not terrible. I think there should be something in there. Right? Maybe? Hopefully. Come on, pot number one. Spot lock it. Oh gosh, grab the baby mic. You have one job. Got anybody? Oh man, look at that, dudes! What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten crab, dude. Ten crab in four hours. Holy mackerel! And I see a lot of keepers in there too. First, we're gonna just toss this back over. Spot lock is our friend. Oh yes! All right, come on out, y'all. Come on out. Oh man! Good grief! Look at this. We are having a day, a day, dude, good creep. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna freshen this up. We're gonna get our pliers. I, I like, I'll bet you every one of those is a keeper. I would put money on it. Good night. All right, everybody stay at the front, would you? Hang tight for me here. I'm gonna grab just one chicken leg. This chicken ain't gonna be bad yet, but we'll just throw an extra fresh one in there. We're just gonna, Oh wait, I didn't close it. Hold up. Bring that back in. We should close this first, ladies and gentlemen. Crab trap 101. Close the crab pot after you've baited it up and before you throw it back in. There we go. Look at this hole. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 crab. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna open this up. We're gonna drop them in here. I'm gonna use our live well. I can use the live well! Hooray! Dude, I'm pumped to use this live well. Not gonna lie. Put the plug in the bottom. You know what we're gonna do? Here's what we're gonna do. Let me show y'all what we're gonna do. Watch this. Okay, okay, check this out. This is sweet. Here we go. Come down here to look at that aerator. Flip that on. Oh, I hear water. Oh, you know what? We need to make sure. 
This one ain't filling up. All right, we turned that one off. Perfect. Look at that! Ha! We have a live well! A legitimate live well! Actually, I'm gonna open this up a little bit. Let more water in. Oh, wait, you know what? That in? There we go. Now that's in. Ha! We're not gonna put too much water in that, but just enough. Keep the crabs wet. Let's go measure some crab out here. I mean, look at all this. Look at all these guys, man. Dude. This is crazy. This is a banner day so far. All right, you gotta be five from tip to tip. That one's almost six. In to the live well you go. There we go. I need to clean this thing off. Can't see. Daggum thing. There we go. One for one. Two for two. Three for three. Four for four. Eight for eight. Nine for nine. Can we make it official? Baker's dozen, 13 right here. Did we just go 13 for 13? That'd be a first. Oh my heavens, that's six and a half across. 13 for 13. And that's just the first pot. Holy smokes. I have never done that in my life. I mean, I've only been crabbing here for two and a half years. So not a long life, mind you, but wow. That is incredible. We're gonna go ahead and turn that off back here. Oh, so beautiful. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna close this up. Let's get to the next pot. There we go, pot number two. Oh my gosh, dude. Dudes! <laughs> Look at all the crab in there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like another dozen, I think. Good night. Oh, we got some big ones in here. Got some big ones. Fresh piece of chicken going in. Pot going back out. Oh, look at look at this guy. <laughs> He's like. Look at this guy right here. That's a big one. I'll bet that's seven across right there. That's a beautiful blue crab. We'll keep him for sure. Here we go, coming up on the small trap. Let's see if these little single deckers are getting in on the fun too. I just totally whipped on that, dude. Hold up. We gotta go back. I totally missed it. Dude, I had one job. One job, grab the buoy. It ain't a hard job either. Hey, we got some stone crab. Oh, we got a big old blue and some stone crabs. Check this out, check this out. Look at this. Hey, look at that. Two stone crabs and a really nice size blue. Let's open it up. There we go. This is a baby one. Like this claw is probably like two and three quarters. Just kind of a small guy though. We're gonna drop him back here. Of course, he's probably just gonna find his way right back in the trap. We'll have to let him go again. But this guy, look at that right there. That is a nice stone crab. And that's a nice claw right there. We're keeping that. You get to pick which claw you want. And I think I want that one. Yep, looks good. Set him off to the side. Let's get this big, big old blue crab, y'all. It's like a seven across blue crab. Gee Look at it. Over here. Yes, sir. What a beautiful crab. Look how bright that blue is. That's, that's gorgeous. It's gonna taste even better, too. I can tell you that. Big claws. Love them when the claws get that size. Get good meat out of that. All right, take a look at that. See that right there? That's gonna grow back. Clean break at the end. Oh, he just goes right back overboard and leaves us with this. And he'll grow his claw back 
and we get a big old chunk of meat. That probably is about, probably about as much as you find in one of those medium sized blue crabs, honestly. So that's a good, good find. Put him right on ice. That is amazing. How many do we end up keeping? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Think about 20? 20 crab? Bro, do you want to flip over? Or are you just, oh, well, you're in a bat. Never mind. You guys sort that out yourselves. Sweet! All right, let's go get these shrimp in on some ice and out of the sun. But good grief, what a first trip we are having in the new boat, which we still got a name. So drop a comment below if you got a great name. A lot of people like SS High Adventure video or the SS High Adventure 2, but I don't know, I'm kind of leaning towards like the catch and cook. I feel like that embodies what we do. We are high adventurers, but I, I feel like the catch and cook would be a good name. I don't know, drop a comment below. Tell me what you think we should name the vessel. But as far as outings go, first outings, we are just absolutely dominating the day. This is fun. I wish every day was like this. We made it here at the campsite. I actually just ran into the lady at the gate and told her I went shrimping and offered her some shrimp. She said, oh, I'll take shrimp. She's got a fridge apparently in her little little kiosk deal where she hangs out and checks everybody in. So I'm gonna go bag up some shrimp for her really quickly. Let's find some good size ones like that guy right there. It's a good one. Don't wanna give her any bait sized ones. That's kind of cheesy. Ooh, that's a good one right there. She'll like that. I'm trying to take the heads off for her. That way she doesn't have to do that extra step. There we go. Nice bag. You know what? Let's throw that stone crab claw in there. I think she'd like that. Perfect. Seal that up. Knock, knock. Oh, oh good heavens. <laughs> I, threw a, I threw a stone crab claw in there for you too. I don't know if you like crab or not. Yeah. Absolutely. I took the heads off real quick. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank <laughs> you so much. Absolutely. Thanks for helping me remember which spot I was in. <laughs> you enjoy it, okay? I will. Yes, ma'am. Have a good evening. Oh, okay. I think we've backed up into the jungle. Let's see how this looks out here. There is no shade in this spot. I just realized pulling up. Let's see. Yeah, we might be in the jungle a little bit. Got some power and water though. Let's see what our view is like over here without getting into everybody else's campsite. Oh, there you go. Little view of the marsh right out the back. It's not bad, but this will serve us nicely. Still a little hot for a fire. Probably set the tent up right there. We're not gonna need the fire. Got our table. We can be right by the boat. I don't know why we need to be by the boat, but we don't have a lot of space, so we'll have to be by the boat at this point. That looks good, doesn't it? I think we'll just roll with that. All right, come take a look at the digs here. It's pretty basic, nothing crazy. Got our foam bed. I have links in the description to like the sweet foam mattress. It's a memory foam mattress, just fills up like self-inflating. Um, yeah. It's basic, like super basic. One stick of furniture. We have a power source. Yeah, big time. And that's it. You know, when you're uh, camping by yourself, you don't need a lot of amenities. You know, it's just basically you and the fish and the great outdoors. So this should be great though. I like this tent. I can stand up in it. I'm about six foot in Crocs. So if you want the tent, I'll have a link below as well. But yeah. Super easy to set up, super easy to tear down. I like packing light. If this is considered light, I guess, but this is the way to go. All right, let me show you guys the production line we got going on. First, we have the snack section, which is probably the most important section. Mm. Especially since I haven't eaten anything except a gas station breakfast sandwich all day. Oh, 
not delicious. Anyway, we have our main box of shrimp. We have the shrimp tails in here. You can see, got a nice bucket going. Heads over here. And then smaller ones going in this bag. So what I'm just doing, grabbing a couple at a time, like these guys right here. I like both those. Actually, I'm using gloves because they got those little horns that'll poke you. And well, my gloves aren't doing a really good job of keeping me safe. Who's calling me? Ooh, Dixon, California. What do you guys want to bet that this is a spam caller? What should we do? This is Officer Micah. Hello, this is Brenda with the United Health Assessment Department for Self-Employed Realtors. How are you doing today? Good, Miss Brenda. How are you related to the deceased? Okay, the purpose of my call is to interview... Yeah, that's no fun. Just an automated voice call. If you've ever cleaned shrimp before, it's super easy. You just take that where the head meets the tail just pinch it that's all there to it that's it bam baram jam fam now like i said we weren't very discerning while we were out there we kept everything but i knew i wanted to because i'm gonna need some bait later on here in a probably about a month month and a half so i didn't mind culling through these small ones because these small ones are gonna go in ziploc bags into the freezer what a lot of guys will do is they'll like reach down and they'll grab a whole handful like that and then just sit there pitch 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 and then throw the heads away but since i've got some undersized ones that doesn't really work for me this time um that's probably the more efficient way to do it but since i'm culling through some of these small ones and i don't want to keep the heads for bait i'm trying to keep like whole shrimp then i've got since i've got three bags where everything's going then it kind of makes it a little bit more complicated but you know you get the idea there now i gotta pick these heads out that's okay dudes i feel like forrest gump right now i was the only one out there shrimping we caught boxes and boxes of shrimp lieutenant dan said we should share some of our shrimp i told him no I told him we's gonna keep it all. We's gonna eat it ourselves. <laughs> oh dear. So I had to buy a new pot because I totally forgot mine at the house. Fortunately, Ace Hardware of all places <laughs> had a big pot. I guess they had a grilling section, so I got lucky they had big pots. So I'm gonna drop this Zadaran's crawfish shrimp and crab boil, just a mix and drop that right in. I think that's what we're going to cook the crabs up in, at least for now. Will we? Yeah, I think so. I think that's what we're going to do. Bring that to a boil. You know what? I lied. We're going to add more seasoning. What is life without more seasoning? Life short. Add more seasoning. We're going to do Old Bay. Just a pile of it. You want your water muddy with seasoning. That's just from my experience anyway. I've got this Key West Spice Company. This almost has like a smoky aroma to it. I might go good on the crab, huh? There we go. Looks solid to me. All right, now we're done with the seasoning. Oh, and I just got some in my eye and that really hurts. Probably gonna have to rinse my eye out here. Give me a minute. Okay, so I got this tool from Toadfish Outfitters and it's supposed to peel the shrimp and devein them all in one fell swoop. Oh my, look at that. So you just push it down the back. The whole shell comes off. There's this little like razor blade at the end there and it cuts right down the middle and there's your shell. Easy peasy. Push that through and it just separates it. Just push it all the way down the tool. That is pretty slick, I'm not gonna lie. Obviously the bigger the shrimp, the better. Definitely gonna add this to the utensil armory for the future. Keep this in stock. All right, we got us a nice little pile of shrimp. How's this going? That's getting close. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to get us, is that it? Eh, not that one. Let's do this one. We have some Louisiana Cajun fish fry and we're going to bread these up we're going to deep fry some shrimp y'all okay maybe not deep fry but we're going to fry it up in some cajun breading i always saute my shrimp 
But this time, we're gonna do something a little different. We'll put a little layer in just like that. Then, we're gonna drop our shrimp right in there. You know, I should've put this in a Ziploc bag and shooketh it. You know what, we might do that actually anyway. That would just coat everything a lot better. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. That is what we're doing. Ew! Ooh, that was a little dicky. Here, now we're just gonna pour our Cajun breading directly in. This is so much easier, trying to hand toss it. Now you sit here and just coat it up. Delectable looking little morsels in there. Let's get this pan out. Right here, I've got some fresh oil somewhere. Here it is. Canola oil. Drop a bunch in this pan right here. Grab a bit of breading. That looks good. Looks good and ready. Gonna drop shrimp in. How long does this, you know what? I, I haven't done any research at all on frying shrimp. How long does it take? I mean, shrimp generically takes like three minutes to cook. How long do you have to fry it for? We should probably Google these things before just jumping in willy-nilly. Okay, so I just looked up how long you fry shrimp for, and apparently it's like one to two minutes, and it's been a couple minutes now. So we're gonna go ahead and look at this. There you go. I don't even have paper towels for these things. I didn't think that through, honestly. You know, not a whole lot of thought was given to this. Now that I'm sitting here actually doing it, ooh, it's like popcorn shrimp up in this piece. I really hope not having a paper towel isn't gonna ruin these. I got nothing. There we are. It is time to grab some crab. Oh, come on now. Come on. Time to start cooking. There's a couple of them. Here we go. Oh, got to pull the shrimp off too. We got way too much going on here. Whew. Set that right there. Crab goes into the rolling boiling water. Dies pretty much instantaneously. Bring out a cloth. <laughs> Let's pull out the rest of our shrimp. All right, there you go. Bowl of fried shrimp. Let's say a quick prayer. Let's give this a try. Heavenly Father, I thank you for blessing our efforts with success today, Lord God. Thank you for keeping us in safety out on the water. I pray you bless this food to my body now. Through Jesus we pray, amen. First time ever frying up shrimp. I mean, I've had fried shrimp. Been a long time though. Okay, first off, it tastes delicious. Not a whole lot of crunch. I'm trying to remember if shrimp typically has a crunch to it though. That breading, the Cajun, definitely a little spicy. But it goes really well with the shrimp. Holy cow. Mmm. That, I could have a couple bowls of that right there. I think I saw in the store actually they sell like a shrimp fry. And I almost grabbed it, but I wanted to try that. Maybe that's what I'll have to do next time for the shrimp. Maybe there's like a specific type of fry that goes with the shrimp i don't know but it's not crunchy but the breading and the shrimp i do that again all right time to pull some crab out here we go that sounds good do you want any i'm just cooking up some shrimp and crab do you want any shrimp no thank you are you sure Oh, yes, ma'am. Wow. Those are nice. You want any? Very, oh, no, thanks. We're getting ready to eat. Okay. But, yeah. I'm a, I've am got um, I got shrimp in a bag. I already took the head off of. Do you want any of that? I got a bag of it. Well, aren't you going to cook it? Well, no, I've, I, caught, I caught like probably about 40 quarts of shrimp today. Oh, my gosh. Really? Now, it's, it ain't huge, but it's not small stuff. Yeah. Well, we, we're going to do a shrimp. Tomorrow night, so. Okay. We'll, we'll do, are you here till tomorrow? Well, I'm, I'll, you probably won't see me in the morning because I'm gonna head out first thing. Uh, let me grab your bag. Take a look at the bag and tell me if you okay. if you want it or not. Here. Wow. There you go. So do you take it and sell it? No, ma'am. 
I, I give I, I keep it and I give it out to neighbors. Um, nice. Those are nice. Would you like it? Sure. It's just white shrimp. Is that about a pound? Mm. Okay, well, you know what? Little... Take another bag. That that's for sure a pound. Well, what are you doing <laughs> with it? Look at all the shrimp. Good grief! Now, do you take it home? So what I do? This stuff right here is the smaller stuff. That's yeah. my bait. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll put that in separate bags and I'll freeze that uh, when I can't get bait later when it gets cold because okay. all the shrimp will leave. Yeah. Um, all this stuff though. I um keep it at home? I keep it yes ma'am yeah. so I'll freeze it yeah. and then I've got a bunch of neighbors I hand it out to as well oh, that's nice. so I just come up here for the fun of it have a big time I'm gonna probably get about probably about 15 bags wow. of shrimp out of that one I'm gonna go again tomorrow so I will have more than plenty so check this out I made a trade gave him a couple bags of shrimp and I got some paper towels that is amazing that is epic bartering right there. I think I got the better end of that deal, right? <laughs> but seriously, that is sweet. I needed some. Perfect. They had an extra roll. Hey, I'll trade shrimp for what I should have packed in the first place to begin with all day. <sighs> Sun is setting. We have a dish of butter. But more importantly, we have this pile of crab right here. Check this out. Look at that. Now, of course, we're not going to eat all that tonight, but we're definitely going to have a few. What I do with my crab is uh, I cook it and then I'll throw it on ice. And then it's, you can like boil it up for just like a couple of minutes back at home, just kind of reheat it. But you don't want that crab going bad on the ice. Oh, look at that. You can get after one of these big claws right here, though. There you go. Look at that. A lot of folks don't like to get after that crab. I do. Bon appetit. When that butter's hot. Oh, mama. You know, as the day has gone on, I can feel the icy hand of sickness closing in around me. First, it started at the back of my throat. Now it's kind of moved up into my nose. And I'm just like... <clears throat> Tis the season, though, you know? I don't know if shrimp and crab would be what the doctor would order for when you're under the weather. Oh, look at that. But you know what? If we gotta be sick, may as well eat like kings, right? Mm. Oh. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm really trying hard not to get sick right now, but <coughs> there's definitely something in there fighting with me. We've got to be up and at them early because i got to break camp down in the dark. So that should be a lot of fun and make breakfast. So I guess I'll see you all at breakfast time. Oh, God. Oh, that's kind of creepy. Ooh. Uh, good morning, y'all. So I was awakened this morning at 5.30 to, you'll never guess, <clears throat> my tent zipper being unzipped by raccoons. The raccoons were actively trying to get in my tent, which... I know that raccoons try to get in everything right, but I've never had raccoons unzip a tent flap. Like, they had it open about that much. And I had to grab my bag and, like, beat it on the head and zip it back up. Of course, after that, I didn't go back to sleep. These raccoons down here are a menace, man. <clears throat> so, you guys could hear, not feeling much better this morning. But I do have this Klondike Power Cup Chocolate Chip Oatmeal. Wow, that's actually really good. It's like just like really quality oatmeal, if that makes sense. Just powering through this sickness at this point. I need to go get me some vitamin C. I'll go grab some orange juice. Mm. Let's go get some <clears throat> orange juice or something. All right, first pot. Let's go take a look here. Overnight soak. 
Oh yeah. Oh! Got a little car. That's crab. Interesting. I got five crabs. That's it. Definitely not as many as I thought we would have, especially after yesterday. But I'm not complaining. Some good eaters in there. There we go. That a baby. That's how you start your morning. This pot's out of the water a little bit. Dang, son. Crab for days, good sized crab too. That's what I like about this time of year. Like this fall time, it seems to hold true whether you're on the east coast or west coast. That fall time, those big crab, man, they're just in to feed and that's when it's the time to catch them. Nice looking blue crab right there. Woo. Got a few on the deck. Oh, feisty. This guy's a little small, we'll toss him back. Another one. What's that, dude? Ah. Small pot. Whoa. Huh. Guys, check this out. Check this out. Look at this, we went all in on stone crab in this little spot. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five. Five stone crab. Dude, that's crazy. Wow. It's like a little stone crab honey hole right out here. Huh. Those are all kind of small. I could probably get claws off of those two right down there. But, uh, I don't know, man. I think we might just let these guys go. Let them get bigger. We've got plenty of blue crab going on right now. We will keep the blue crab population going strong. There you go. Wait for him to get bigger. I like that idea. All right, we just got done running the lines here. Let me show you what we got in the live well. Did I mention I like this live well? <laughs> Let's see. I don't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. All nice size crab, though. You know, these are. Oh, hey, stand back there. I was real selective with the ones I wanted to keep because we could have kept probably like another seven or eight. But um, I threw the baby ones back. I'm trying to go for the ones with like the big claws like this guy has right here. Look at the claws on this feisty one. That's going to taste good, especially after what I had last night. I'll bet we caught between the shrimp and the blue crab in the last 24 hours. I'll bet we caught like 400 plus dollars worth of seafood and we didn't even fish. Like it was just all shrimping and crabbing. I could have spent yesterday afternoon fishing, but I had to go clean a pant load of shrimp. I think we're gonna go ahead and call it for this trip. Let's go ahead, head on back home and dine at the house. Thank y'all so much for sticking it out with me, even in my sick state the last couple of days. Drop a comment below. What would you like to see next on the channel? Thanks so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one.